well, guys were talking about having a professional circuit and professional this and that, but judging at that time was still done like a beauty contest. Uh, and a little more than that. I mean, you'd watch somebody surf, and on a scale of one to ten, you would decide if he was closest, who was closest to the curl, and did the most maneuvering, and this and that. So it was a lot of movements purposeless movements on the wave to show that you could do this stuff. And I thought, well, the future of the sport would be to have purposeful movements. That is, if you had a course that required that you cut back here in order to get around this thing, and then you had to milk the wave and get up on the tip and then back off and come around this thing and do all that in order to make it, that would be pretty exciting. Does he make it? Does he not make it? Because even in even in diving, which is so beautiful, it's up to a judge, and uh, that kills it. But pole vaulting, high jumping, the discus, running, it's clean. It's man against nature, and uh, it's beautiful. So how could you do that in surfing? Well, the simplest way you could do it is time on a wave. And uh, that would be a little boring for the customers, but nose riding had become something of, of significance and interest. In fact, we were all interested in nose riding. And, uh, so, and I had a board that was specifically uh, specifically designed for better, improved nose riding. So I had my own rider in there, and he didn't do very well in it. Uh, I, the purpose of the contest was to promote my own little business, and then to promote the uh, the, uh, the actuality of surfboard design, and uh, to sell my board, which had a better better nose riding design, I thought. So, so we held this contest. Twenty-five. I, I invited I invited twenty-five of Cal of the world's best surfers, yeah, best nose riders, and uh, they all showed up. And uh, the entry fee was twenty-five dollars, which was a lot of money in those days. It was like two hundred fifty dollars. The prize was fifteen hundred, and, and uh, you got. I had five judges and ten assistants, and each judge faced as the wave, as the rider came along. The uh, judge would note that he was or wasn't on the first 25% of the board, which I arbitrarily determined was the nose, and had paint, painted with a bright color, bright color paint. All the boards came in the night before. We put these black strips behind the 25% section, and then these yellow, red, different colored noses, whatever they wanted. And uh, you could you could kind of see you still couldn't see and the guys still could cheat, but it was better than nothing. One guy, two guys, uh, Rusty Miller and uh, Mike Doyle showed up with. The, Doyle had called up uh, earlier and asked, "How big a tail block can I have? Do I have to have on this board?" He said, "What is that's kind of a, what are you talking about?" He says, "Do I have, do I need a six inch and eight inch tail?" I said, "I don't care how wide your tail block is. You can have it with you want, you know." Okay, thanks, click. So Doyle and Rusty showed up with nine foot boards and at least another a good four feet of double T bands coming out the back. A piece of wood sticking out the back which made the nine foot board uh, thirteen feet long. And so they wanted and their noses were painted up for the first 25% of 13 feet. And they wanted to, they, it, Doyle, Doyle got a little testy in a friendly way, you know. Said, Come on, I, I called you, said da da da. And uh, I didn't know what, you know, he said, these are the rules, these are the rules. And right, it's right at the beginning of the contest, and there's a lot of people with a lot of, a lot at stake, with a lot of cool boards there. And uh, he kind of kept insisting on that. I, I said a little prayer. I said a little prayer. I said, what am I going to do? And at that point, a seagull flew over and pooped on Doyle's board. 
and I and I had a bad headache. I had a bad headache. And I said, so I said, you know what? This is my contest. <laughs> I don't care what I said. Those things, you cut them off. You're out. You know, or you can ride if you want to ride, but not for money. All right. Rusty sawed his off, but he left his two bricks on the back. He had resin two red bricks on the back for counterbalance. jazz drummer. I grew up in Laguna listening to the radio that would come over from XCMO Tijuana, which was the only station that really played any music. And I'd hear the dance music and learned all the tunes and did all that. But every once in a while there'd be these more advanced rhythms that would come. And then uh, bebop came. And the music of uh, Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker, these guys. And that's another kind of twist and turns and opening. I'm there, yeah, I'm on the beach, but I got a college education. I've grown up in an artist colony. I've been a surfer and a surfboard maker, and I've worked in plastics and composite materials. And I'm very familiar with materials and have become familiar with a particular material and have it in my garage that could be used. And have had it in my garage for months and have tried to make something else that has failed from it. So I backed off and made with a hot knife, and, I mean a hot, uh, yeah, with an electric carving knife and a hot iron and a copy of the Honolulu Advertiser. I made the first boogie ball. And I didn't know what to call it. I called it a snake machine for a while. Side, navel, arm, knee, and elbow anchoring in. Yeah. Tried that name out. That was not a very popular name. I was going to work that name in with Mori and Mori Eel because the materials are like eel. So I left my closet and uh, I sat and I I came up with uh, the word. So I, this is the language I came up with. No. Uh, the name Boogie revealed itself. Came to, you know, you talk about, people talk about revelations. Well, I have revelations. We all have revelations. One, two, three. Thank you. 
dream of building a board that outperforms every surf surfboard and cannot break and cannot kill you. <laughs> hey, you're great, Jennifer. These are great questions. Thank you. Thank you. I did my research. You sure did. As to using your name, which I cannot spell and I'm afraid to try and pronounce because I don't want to mispronounce, Schmier? Mm -hmm. See? Schmier? No. From oh. Sour Broken. <laughs> From Sauerbrocken, what's that? A German town. Oh. A couple hours from Paris. Yeah. Yeah. See? Yeah. It's catchy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I wouldn't want to use that name on the board. Like well, if you change your mind, just If I know. change my mind, you'll be the first Call to me. know. Call <laughs> me. So, when you worked for Boeing, did you ever steal any classified information? Did I ever steal? Any yeah. classified information at Boeing? Well, that's... A you know, I'm sorry, but this is the stupidest guy I've ever heard. I'm trying to be heard. funny. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is funny. Okay. Okay. Of course not. Okay. You don't even tell your classification when you're classified. You don't say what you are. I know. It's a joke. Um. Are you a fortress? Mm-hmm. <laughs>